Today's presenter is LucidWorks software developer, Kiran Chatori. Thank you for joining us today, Kiran. Thank you, Alia. Hello, everyone. Welcome to LucidWorks webinar. My name is Kiran Chitori, and today I'm going to present on event capturing, processing, and how to drive all of your search results by using these events. So just to start off with, if you still have the question, what is LucidWorks and what do we do? Uh, we do search, and these are some of our top top clients that we are and we are empowering all of their search using our search platform Fusion. So uh, the question, the, so to the next question, if you don't know about uh, Fusion, uh, Fusion is our enterprise next generation next generation search platform that is built on top of Apache Solar and Spark to power to serve as a platform for intelligent search and analytics. Now, uh, now just, to, just to get a picture from this high-level overview, what we have here is uh, there are, uh, the, the high-level overview of uh, Fusion, and it serves three things. Uh, the three main components of LucidWorks Fusion are, one is getting the data in, as we see on the bottom, through the connector framework, we get all of our customer data into our into our product. And then once we have the data in, we process this data using Apache Solar and Apache Spark. And then the third and the final and the most important part we have is we, uh, we, we, deliver, we deliver this data by using our APIs and, this, and through a lot of features like search, recommendations, personalization, analytics, and this, this is what powers all of our customer sites. Now today I'm going to go about, uh, I'm going to talk about events and what events are and how can some, how, how, how do our customers use them to, to power all of their applications. Now I want to start this talk by asking like, what do we do with search? Uh, now I, I want to ask this question to all of you. Uh, what is search and how do you use it? So, for example, most of the most of the customers use search as a means for finding information. It, it is a means of delivering information. That means all of us have an application application to to deliver search to all of our users. Now, whenever we are delivering search, people are coming to our applications and they are executing events. They are they are executing searches, they are navigating, and they are buying uh, products, they are adding uh, items to cart, or they are uh, disliking uh, our search results. Now, whenever they are doing it, whenever they are doing this, they are leaving a trail of information behind, and all of this information that they are leaving behind. So they are, the users are coming to our websites, and then they are giving us a ton of information. Now all we need to do is we need to capture all this information that they are giving us. We need to take that information, and, we need, and, and whenever the next time the user comes to our site, we need to improve. We need to improve the user, user feel and the search results for the same user uh, who visited back, now, as an overall view, uh, the goal here is I'm going to talk about how we can capture these user events. Whenever they come to our site, whenever they are executing searches, or whenever they are uh, not liking our search results, how do we capture that information? How do we capture our? How do we capture a user who who went away from the site um, because he, he didn't like because he didn't like the search results? And what do we do with these events? Now, the first step is capturing these events. And the second step is what do we do these events and how do we use them? And then the last part is what kind of recommendations can we generate from these events? What algorithms do we use? Uh, what, is our, uh, what is our framework uh, to deliver and to mix these events along with search? And how do we provide it? Now to start off with, I'm going to start off by talking about how do we collect these events. Now the first part of event collection is um, the, our recommended approach for collecting events is using the Snowplow JavaScript tracker. So just to talk about uh, Snowplow, Snowplow is an, uh, JavaScript is an open source, it's an open source uh, tracker that can be used uh, in similar to uh, Google Analytics. It can be embedded into anyone's website and it can be used to collect user events like page views, page pings, clicks, 
or any custom events like add to cards, transactions. So we can collect all this information by using this open source software called Snowplow. And we can configure Snowplow to send the information back to Fusion. And uh, when, when our Snowplow sends Fusion this information, what do we do is we take this information, we, we normalize it, and then we store it into Solar in a format that is understandable to us. So now here, what we see is we see a dashboard application. So, uh, so just to begin with, uh, this dashboard is powered by using uh, LucidWorks Silk. Silk is a platform for delivering dashboard analytics by taking by reading the data from Solar and generating these plots that uh, makes us deliver reports. Now, in this dashboard report, what we have is on the left side, uh, we see these events. Uh, and, and, and their time series. So for example, you can look at this dashboard and say, uh, what is the time during which I, 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 what is the time during which my application got the peak events? Or what is the time during which uh, there are no users on my site? What is the time during which, what is the time in the last 30 days during which when I got the peak results? So if you use this kind of dashboard analytics, you can easily say by saying, what are your peak times, what are your bad times? And what is the, the additional information that we get is, on the bottom we see a panel called type of event, and this panel tells us what are the type of events that this tracker is sending us. For, so for example, PV stands for page view, PP stands for page ping, and uh, the other two events are click and add to cart. So by using this, we can see like how many page pings happened and how many page views happened. And also the additional information that it gives us is, it gives us the user ID, anonymous, anonymized user ID, and then the operating system that they are using, the browser they are using, and where are these users located, what are their IP addresses, and it, it gives us all this information, and it's, it is better to get as much information as possible so that we can later use this in, information to do different types of analytics. Now, just to talk about the flow, or uh, the raw signal flow, and how it goes inside LucidWorks Fusion. So on the top, what we have is we have Snowplow payloads, which is uh, the information generated by Snowplow and sent to the Signal Service API, or the JSON payloads, which is the raw JSON information sent by our customers to our signal service. So the signal service is part of a LucidWorks Fusion. What it does is it takes all these raw payloads or the snowplow, snowplow payloads, it takes that information, uh, it processes the event, and then it stores back the event into this uh, collection. Now just to talk about uh, these three, uh, the bottom part of the uh, picture here, there are three collections here. Uh, one is test, test signals, and test signals aggregation. Uh, the test is our primary collection. So what do, what do I mean by primary collection? Primary collection is something like a product catalog. It is a place where you store all your organic information, information about all of your catalog or your main, it is your primary search, which is where you're delivering your search from. And then the other two collections I have here are, they are called auxiliary collections. Now what do auxiliary collections do? They, they store the raw and processed events. So for example, here we are using test underscore signals uh, as, a, as a collection, and we store our, our raw events in this collection. And then test signals aggregation, we use it to store our processed events. Now whenever you use our Fusion Admin UI, and whenever you create a collection, we create these collections for you so that these, uh, these signals information can be captured. Now, as I, th as, I talked, as I talked previously about JSON payloads, let's go a little bit deep about what does this JSON payloads do. So, we, uh, so an another, other than Snowplow, another way of uh, capturing events for us is uh, accepting JSON payloads from our users. So, for example, um, we, for example uh, users can send their own JSON payloads to our Fusion API. Now, what is the schema of these JSON payloads? Since events can be very generic, they can be schema-less, we, we want to, we, we generalized our schema to as generic as possible. So the only required field of the JSON uh, payload is type, and there can be more properties 
and uh, you can add as much information as you can in the payload. Let's look at a few examples and it will be more clear to you after that. So for example here on the left side what I have is I have a raw signal payload uh, that, has, that has a basic information which is type. What does type mean? Type means what, is, what type of event it is. So in this example it is a page view event. And then the timestamp, uh, the timestamp in the JSON payload represents the actual time the event was sent to us. And the params is an arbitrary map that users can use to add any type of information that they want, any 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 kind of metadata that is related to the event. So, and out of all these fields, only type is the re only required field to send uh, in in the JSON payload. And and since it's the only type, we can use it to send, 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 sorry, send different types of information. So on the left side, what we have is a raw event. On the right side, what we have is a processed event. Uh, so what we do is we take the raw event and we, we process it and then we, we flatten it so that we can store it in solar. So for example, as you see, we use dynamic fields to store this event as a solar document. As you see, uh, whenever, uh, when we are converting the raw event to the actual payload, we are adding more fields like count underscore i, time, time, count underscore i, which represents the, how many times this event has happened. Now, before we saw a very general page view, let's see what, what the signal would look like uh, if you want to send more metadata along with the event. So for example, uh, this example has more metadata. For example, what is the page title? What is the page URL? What's the user ID? What's the IP address? What's the time zone? By sending all this information, we can later gener generalize our analytics by saying, okay, what are my most frequent users from New York? Who, who are my most frequent users? And what type of pages are, are they seeing? Now, whenever you send us this information, we store it back in solar by adding more metadata. And all the stored information, it gets, it gets stored in solar. And then we, we use this information later. I will show you how we use this uh, stored information. Now this is an example of a search click. Uh, now I'm going to back off and then I'm going to ask you about what is a search click. Now if we think of a search click, let's say all of our applications that provide search to a user, a user comes to our website. He comes to our application and he does a search. Then he sees uh, 10 or 20 search results and, and uh, the application provides him all these results but the user is only click on the most relevant uh, result to him. Now uh, he might click on the first result, he might click on the third one or he might go to second page and find the most relevant one. Now how do we capture this feedback? How do we capture what is user, user is clicking on? So in the left, we see a raw click payload. Uh, now in this payload, uh, in this payload, the essential fields for a search click are what is the query that user made, what is the document ID that the user clicked on, and additional information here is what is the position of the document that the user clicked on, whether user has selected any facets, whether he filtered on any categories or not, and what is the actual user ID. Now we take this information and we store it back in solar. As you see, the position payload is transformed to params.position underscore s. Now we are storing all this in solar so that we can later use it. As I said, uh, whenever we define a payload of type click, the necessary parameters are query, what is the query the user made, and what is the document ID that the user, is, user has clicked on. Now we've seen like what are the different type of search results and how do we store it. Now the next question is all the search results that user sent us, they can be spam, uh, they, they can be schema-less or they might just be bad information. Now how do we process these events? Uh, and whenever, uh, so for example, very popular websites, very popular e-commerce websites, they get a lot of hits. For example, they, for a day they might get one million, two million events. Now thinking about it, how do we use these events? Now to use these events, we have to aggregate them. We have to normalize them. Based on our requirements, we have to process these events and remove all the duplicate items. So, the, so what we do in Fusion is we provide this aggregation service that does the processing. The aggregation service is a batch processing. 
it, it's not a real-time processing, but it's a batch processing. So whenever you decide, uh, I have enough information, I want to do the aggregation now, I want to process this information, then you do what you do is you go to this aggregation UI and you do the processing. And this processing is done by using Apache Spark. By using Apache Spark, what we do is we take this information and we send this uh, data to Spark as a job, and Spark processes all this information. For example, uh, there are three types of aggregations that we support by default, and they are simple aggregations, click aggregations, and event minor aggregation. Let's go a little bit into what 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 these types mean and what do they actually do. So, as I said before. Uh, this is a this is a data flow picture that clearly tells us what is actually happening. So in the bottom, what we have is we have our primary collection test, and then our raw signals collection test underscore signals. The raw collection has all the information that we stored until now, all these raw raw events. And what we're going to do is on the top, uh, the user is going to define an aggregation job using our Fusion Admin UI. He's going to define a job, and based on his needs, he's going to specify, I want to, I want to get the top 10 users, or I want to get the top 10 queries. Or he might say, I want to get the top 10 queries in this geographic location. Or during this period of time, in the last one week, what are my top queries? Or what are my top clicks? Or for this query called TV, what is the most popular item for me? So user can specify all of this in our aggregation job definition. And as soon as user specifies and runs the aggregation, what we do is we, use, we, we spin up a Spark driver or we use an existing Spark driver and then we send this information to Spark in, in, in terms of a job jar. Whenever we send this information, uh, Spark, this, this data, so what, what happens inside Spark is, Spark job is, it goes to our raw signals collection and then it takes this information from it and then it processes this information and then it stores it back into our aggregated collection. So by using Spark, well, the benefit we are getting is Spark has a lot of uh, predefined aggregation and analytics methods that we can always use. And, and it also has more different algorithms, more complex uh, components like MLlib that can all be used to do these different types of processing. As you can see, the worker, all the Spark workers, they take the information from the raw signals collection, and then once they process all of this information, they store it back in this uh, second auxiliary collection called test signals AGGR. AGGR means aggregation. Now, what we have is we store these aggregated results back. Now, let's go through a few examples on like what, what does it actually mean? Like what, do those, uh, what does aggregation look like and what does the aggregation definition look like? So, for example, aggregations can be, it can be very simple, it can be very complex. You, you, you might ask what are my top more, topmost categories, what are my top queries, or you might make more, more or you can define more complex aggregations like uh, give me decaying weights, give me time decays for all my click aggregations, decay all my raw events. When I say decay, I mean the older events get, gets lesser priority and then the newer events get more priority. Or you, might, or you can define our aggregation saying, give me similar users who have clicked on similar documents. You can define all of this using our aggregation API. Now let's see an example. Here I'm going to go through a flow of an aggregation example, of, of a simple aggregation example. On the left side, what I have here is, uh, I have a list of JSON payloads, and they, they, they are of type rating, and, what, and they are very simple payloads. All they have is rating. So for example, they're coming to my uh, product page, and they are clicking on something, and they're rating something. And let's say we are capturing all of this. Let's think saying, we are capturing all these ratings and we are using uh, the signal service to store all this information. Now, once you, you can keep on storing these events and these events get stored in the raw signals collection. And once we have this within the raw signals collection, whenever we want to process them, we're going to define this aggregation definition within Fusion Admin UI. 
So for example, just to go through this definition at a higher level, what we have here is, when I say signal types, signal types means uh, what, what type of signal, signals should this job process, and what type of aggregator I want to use, and what type of fields I want to group on. And in the aggregates, what I have defined is, I've defined what are the what, what are the actual aggregation functions that should be done? So for example here, I, I've defined the, I have configured the job to do like standard deviation, top K, and then the mean. And then what happens is when this definition is defined and then it is sent to the aggregation service, you can start this job manually or you can configure your scheduler to do this job every one minute, every 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 single day, every one every, once a week, or every 12 hours. It depends on your uh, needs. You can use this as a service, and as soon as you use this service, we're going to use Spark to do the processing. And once we do the processing, we're going to store it in our aggregated collection, and then uh, and then that's it. The job is done. Uh, so to look, to see what it looks like. So th this slide shows what an aggregated document looks like for us. So for example, it has the fields called, what is the job ID that this document belongs to? Since this is a solar document, you see solar type field names, so for, as we use dynamic field names all over. And, uh, and there are different types of things. So for example, the payload tells us everything about the document. What is the job, what is the aggregation job that processed this event? What is the type of this aggregation? And what is the timestamp? And what is the count? How many times have I seen this? So for example, here we have seen different types of ratings. And here we see a count of five. Since there are uh, five events that this document processed, and it combined all of them into this single aggregated document. And we see different things. Now what do we want to get out of this? We want to get the standard deviation. We want to get the top K and then the errors in the top key, and then the mean of all of these things. And this is just a simple definition. By, by doing more complex examples or complex definitions, you can get complex, uh, you can get very good results out of this aggregation API. Now, uh, now let's go through like uh, an example of click aggregation. Now on the left side, what I have is, I have this query called sharp, sharp TV RCA. I have four raw events. And then the document IDs, I have four queries, and then the documents that the user clicked on after they made these queries. And these are the raw documents. And whenever I send this information back, all of these raw events get transformed into aggregated events. As you see, uh, since uh, the second payload in the aggregated documents, it, it has a count of two, because we took two raw events and based on the definition, they both look alike. They both have the same values. So we, we combine them into two events. By doing this, we get, rid, rid, we get rid of a lot of duplicates, a lot of redundancy, and everything. And since this is a click aggregation, we see time decays. So for example, as you see on the right side, we have different weights for these different events. And what does it mean? Why are all those weights different? And these weights represent the freshness of these events. So for example, the RCA event has more, it has, it has a better weight because uh, it, it, is, it is most recent, it is the most recent event. It happened in 2015 compared to the other three events that happened in 2014. So yeah, this is how the click aggregation works and it gives us time decays, which gives us help with like how we, which helps us make a decision about how we boost these documents. Now, this is a click aggregation. And then the other type of, the third type of aggregation we have is event minor aggregation. What does event minor do? Event minor takes all of your re, raw events, it divides them into sessions, it builds a co-occurrence matrix, and then it builds a graph out of, out of this matrix, and then it stores all of that graph information inside Solar. And then whenever you query, it, it, it reads the documents from Solar as a graph, and then it, it, it traverses through the graph, and then it gives you recommendations. You can go to the blog that I have listed here to know more about this event minor recommendation that one of our engineers has worked on. Now, now, now we have all of this information. Now we have used, now we have collected events, and we have processed them into simpler documents. Now what do we do with this? How do, we, how do I use this? Now there are, 
Now, another question is, how do I use them and mix them with my organic search results? Uh, our organic search results, right? Now, let's see a data flow of how, how you can mix this or how Fusion mixes this using, uh, using stages. Now, as you see, uh, when our user makes a search to the primary collection, uh, we, sorry, uh, just to explain the, the, the middle bit, which is the query pipeline, Fusion has a concept of query pipeline, which is a combination of co query stages. The query stages, they transform the request based on the stage definition. So it can be as simple as setting some parameters in the stage, or it can be as complex as uh, doing a recommendation within the stage. Now, what, what, now, just to talk about this uh, query pipeline definition, as you see, I have a query solar stage, and then I, uh, before that, I have recommendation stages. So what happens is when our user makes a query, it goes to the re recommendation stage. Recommendation stage, what it'll do is it'll go to this aggregated signals collection. And when it goes to this aggregated signals collection, it does a query in this collection, it processes the results, and then it adds parameters to this request. Now, what kind of parameters are these? It adds these boost parameters before the query is actually sent to Solar. Now, when the query is sent to Solar, it gets all these boost parameters saying, okay, for this, for this query, these are the IDs to be boosted on with these corresponding weights. Now, when, our, when our that happens, we're gonna use it, and then we're gonna use it and then whenever that happens inside Solar, those documents that the aggregated collection is uh, recommending on, they get boosted to the top. And we generate the search response back to the user, and those documents uh, that, are, that the users have clicked on, they will be on top. Now let's see what it actually looks like in real time. So for example, here uh, what I have is, I have, on the left side, I have a, I have a query that is delivering results by using uh, a general, by using organic search results, by using a normal no recommendations pipeline. And on the left, we, we see different results for Call of Duty. Some of them are relevant, some of them are not relevant based on how we see it. And on the right side, what I have is, I have a pipeline called demo recommendations that powers the search results by using the top items that the users have actually clicked on. So on the right, we see more relevant results. So for example, a user came to the web, your application and he might have clicked on these documents which are on the second page, which are on, uh, which are on the ninth position or the tenth position. Now by taking the user popularity, by taking what the user has clicked on, we are boosting these documents and providing more relevant uh, results to the user. Now this can be, this shouldn't be the only way you do search, um, whereas popularity should be one of the factors for de uh, delivering search. It shouldn't be the only one, just so that you keep, uh, you keep, keep in mind. So yeah, as, as I said, uh, on the left side, we have the search, search page that is generated from no recommendations. On the right side, we have search page generated from recommendations. Now, uh, now when we delivered this, when, when we first started implementing this, uh, we did this at one of our primary customers, uh, Dennis Kirk. Uh, and when we implemented signals on them, one of their primary complaints was, customers would come to their website and then they do a search for spark plugs. Just to talk about Dennis Kirk, Dennis Kirk does like, they do snowmobiles, snow vehicles, and then the maintenance parts, all these accessories. They, deliver, they do e-commerce on these transactions. Now, one of their primary complaints was when users come to the search and then they do a query for Spark plugs, their organic search results are not so good. They're not happy with them because the results do not talk about actual Spark plugs that they wanted the customers to see. So what we did is we went there, we implemented Fusion on their platform, we started collecting those raw events and then we started transforming them into different events. And once we did that, this is what their page looks like right now. So what we see here is we see more relevant results, what our customer wanted the customer wanted people to see based on the popularity and based on the events that they have sent to us. Now I'm going to show a little demo on uh, what this would actually look like.
Okay, now what I, what, I, what I show here is for someone who is not familiar with uh, LucidWorks Fusion, this is our LucidWorks Fusion admin UI, and uh, this is what we, yeah, th this, is, this is what powers our entire platform. So as you see here, uh, the, all the items that we have here, they are actual collections. And, uh, when our, and within every collection, we have different auxiliary collections. So for example, we see Best Buy, for example, a, a, for a collection called Best Buy, we see uh, something, we see the auxiliary collection called Best Buy Logs. Best Buy Logs has all the search queries that users did on this collection. And Best Buy Signals, which means the raw signals, and then Best Buy Aggregations, which is the aggregated document. Now let me go back to another collection which has better information. So I have this demo collection, which has this product catalog, and then I have three auxiliary collections. I have this signals collection, which has this raw events, and then I have this aggregated collection, which has this aggregated documents. Now when I click on this, uh, there's a menu on the left side, which, which gives me different components of the admin UI. And I'm gonna click on query pipelines here, and just to show what a query pipeline is, Query pipeline is something that is used to query, and then it can be used to deliver information and transform information based on the query that is incoming. So here in this pipeline, this pipeline is compri comprised of a bunch of stages. It does the it, ha it has the workbench stage. It has the search field. So for example, what are the number of results to return, the sort order, and then the actual fields to search on and then matching, and then we have these three stages which represent recommendations. And then we have the actual query solar stage that actually goes to solar, makes a query, and return the results back. Now these pipelines, as you see on the right side, we use the pipeline to make the actual query and uh, whatever results are returned from the pipeline, we deliver it to the users. And Another, another thing I want to show here is aggregation. So for example, you might ask, what does an aggregation definition have? So for example here, we have a click aggregation that is defined on signal type click, and then it has different types of fields. Uh, in this aggregation, nothing is defined, but usually you would define them unless the, or, or, or otherwise the default is going to be set. As you see, there are different fields, and using this we can uh, take all this information and modify our raw events and define our aggregation. Now just to show you our one, uh, some of our dashboards that we have. So for example here, this shows a Banana dashboard. This shows, this, this shows a dashboard that gives us different information about the signals, about the raw events that are present. So what we see here is, on this page, we see different clicks. We see the actual queries users made for our collection, the documents that the users are clicked on, the type of event, and then the top categories, which means the, the, which means the facets or the navigation items that the users have selected. And we have different types of these events. So for example, another type of dashboard that I want to show is search analytics dashboard. So when our people are using fusion pipelines and they are using it to query, what we do in the background is we capture all of that information and then we store in this collection called logs. And then this collection has all the information that the users have queried on. So for example, just to show you a payload, it shows all the parameters that we used, all the boost parameters, and what the pipeline IDs, and all those uh, request parameters. Now using, this dash, using these dashboards, we can actually tell what are my top 10 searches? What are the top 10 searches users did for my catalog? And what are the searches that resulted with zero results? So for example, using this, we can deliver our analytics saying, okay, these are the searches you got zero results for. And here we see the time flow, the time series flow, uh, during which the users have made, and what is the average query time? What is the minimum query time? What is the max time? And you can define your cutoff saying like, what are my queries that took more than a minute? 
and these are queries that are detrimental to your uh, application, right? It makes the user stay or go. And we can configure our dashboards to plot all of this information by just from the raw events. So the theme I want you to take is, uh, one second, I'm gonna share my keynote back again. Yeah, the, 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 the key point I want you to take from this talk is by using signals, by using events and by using signals, you're modifying your behavior based on what is happening in your environment, based on what the user is doing in your, in your environment, what is he doing, and how, how, how is he behaving on your site. And by using this, you can actually deliver, you can deliver all those results. And I'm gonna end my talk by saying that, and I'll just go to the questions now. Great, thank you, Karen. So we do have a few questions that have been asked throughout the session. Again, if you'd like to have your questions answered, you can enter them on the bottom left side of the window. So the first question, Karen, is, can a job be triggered by an event such as 100,000 records were received? Yes, uh, so we have this uh, component called scheduler, and using the scheduler, you can uh, kick off your job uh, saying whenever, whenever I get a million events, please trigger this aggregation job. It is easy to do by a fusion scheduler. Great, thank you. The next question. Why does test signals need to be a collection and not just some row in JSON files on HDFS, for example? In other words, why not use HDFS to store the data instead of solar? It, it is more simpler uh, by using solar. Uh, so for example, whenever we are delivering our platform, we don't know how many events our users are gonna store. So, uh, solar, so by using solar, you can store as simple as one million events, or you can store as, as complex as 100 million events. And it makes it easy for us by using uh, solar as, especially because we use solar throughout our platform and it is our integration, it is our only mechanism for storing right now. If we want HDFS, we could actually store these indexes on HDFS itself, which would provide the means to scale for us. Great. Next question. Can Fusion integrate or leverage statistical tools like R to do these analytics? Uh, no, not right now, not that as, of, as uh, not, not as I know right now. Uh, so since we are using Spark and we are assuming Spark provides all the normal, uh, all, all most common most common aggregation examples or statistical examples. But we'll, yeah, we will be we, uh, the more we go on in the future, we are going to have a more tighter integration with Spark. Next question: How do I define my own aggregations? Do I have access to Spark directly? No, you don't need to go to Spark at all. Uh, you can use our Fusion Admin UI to define this aggregation example based on your requirements. And the Fusion Admin UI, it kicks off your aggregation, it reports the results back from Spark. So ideally, we don't want you to deal with Spark at all. Our, our platform is going to manage Spark and it is gonna do what you want it to do. Uh, and you can do this all via our admin UI, and ideally you don't need to touch Spark at all. Great, thank you. Next question. You mentioned graphs during event mining. What visualization tools do you offer? Uh, currently, we, we don't have any customer-facing uh, tools right now. We have some demo tools that we use, but uh, the primary purpose for storing these graphs is uh, we, these results are queried back whenever the user makes a query, and then this graph is traversed and the results are sent back. Uh, in the future, we might provide tools, but uh, currently our main integration mechanism is uh, mixing the, the results from the graph in the, search, in, the search, in the search results. Great. Next question is, how do you manage the load when indexing signals, NRT, and also running Spark aggregation jobs at the same time. Yeah, so the thing with, this is a good question. So the thing with lo load is, uh, the, our signals API is generic so that you can send a signal event or you can send multiple, or you can send a batch, ba uh, batch of events or batch of thousand events. The more your requirements are, you can put Fusion on multiple nodes. Fusion is a distributed platform. You can put our, you can put our API server on multiple nodes 
and send the information through our proxy which load balances all of this information and using this you can scale all of it and about spark at the same time yeah so since uh, so the advantage with using spark is the signals that we are receiving we are doing it in memory uh, we are receiving and just storing them and we are not processing any of this information in memory we are only processing in spark so there is no problem with uh, storing all of this information and kicking in spark at the same time because they both are different jvms next question what are the options for fusion for accepting data can it integrate with databases such as db2 or oracle yes uh, so for example I, I, I want to share this thing, uh, our admin UI again. I just want to show like what can Fusion do. So here, what we have is uh, for a collection. Uh, let's say I have a collection called CNN. Fusion provides this component called data sources, which which gives which gives all of our customers so many mechanisms to get get their data into Fusion. So for example, here you see like we support all the JDBC, different types of databases, uh, Amazon, S3, and local file systems, SMB, Hadoop. We have a lot of, we have at least 20 to 30 data sources that, uh, that, are, that are constantly used by our customers to bring the data in. Thank you. Can the events be aggregated by time intervals in Fusion rather than having to send a timestamp as an event attribute? Yes, uh, the timestamp event is just optional. If you don't provide the timestamp event, Fusion will record the time uh, based, on which, based on when the uh, event is actually sent. Thank you. Does your analytics platform allow for correlations of disparate collections? Uh, well, uh, I, I want to ask more about the question. Uh, uh, what do you mean by collocations? Like, are they what type of schemas do they have? Do they have similar schemas, or do they have do they have different schemas? But in future, we are going to allow the joining of uh, different data from different collections by using our query pipelines. So, for example, you will be able to join your product catalog with the signals as I showed you, or you can join different. Uh, collections with different data and then by using query pipelines but but it all I, I would I would go, come back to you and say like it all depends on the schema that you have and how you have it and how do you want to use it thank you what is the benefit of using fusion for analytics compared to other competitors in this space what advantages does fusion offer uh, the main thing I want to say is we don't do analytics we don't do only analytics we do search with analytics I don't know of many platforms that are doing search with analytics. So when, when I say search with analytics, we are mixing and taking all of your search results. You can boost your search results and mix them with all these analytics. So we are using analytics as a means to deliver search, to deliver better search. Thank you. Is there an API via which I can expo expose the analytics to other systems? Yes, you could use our query pipelines API or you can use our reporting API, uh, which is just a REST API. So it's all a HTTP call away and you can use all of that to deliver, to send this information back to other systems. Great. Do you have a training for using Fusion that contains this kind of configuration? Uh, yes, uh, our technical services does uh, fusion training and solar training as well. Great. So that's all of the questions we have for now. Um, if you continue to have questions, we will be sending out a follow-up email to all registrants of the webinar with a link to the recording and the slides. You can respond to that email with any additional questions, um, or there will be an option for you to contact sales. So thank you for joining us today and we hope you enjoy the rest of your day.